this person who's commanding us to choose evil by his own admission and by his own tongue is not appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah would never command us to do evil. My dear brother and companion, Jonathan. Walaikum salam, Father. Thank you for joining me. It's an honor. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, the honor is all mine. Thank you. God bless you. Today, we want to talk for a little bit about a news headline that came out on CNN. And actually there was a story that appeared on many of the mainstream news channels that I think really highlights the essence of our religion, uh, which is the true monotheistic religion of God, the true religion uh, from Adam all the way till Noah and Noah till Abraham, Abraham till Moses. It's the true Judaism. It's the tr true Judaic religion, the true essence of Christianity and of Islam. Um, it was a news story that had highlighted some words from the Pope, Pope Francis. It was on the front page of CNN in the middle of September, and it appeared after that on different news outlets on, on television. And basically, he was speaking to the believers around the world that believe in him. Um, he was speaking to the Catholics, especially that live within the United States. And he was making his comments, uh, giving his direction towards to his congregation, to his followers on what it is that they should do uh, concerning the upcoming U.S. elections. And he was stating that, you know, we are in this dilemma. Uh, there are uh, two people that are evil. He considers uh, Trump to be an evil person because Trump is against immigration. He believes that uh, being against refugees is evil. And he also believes that Kamala Harris is evil. And he stated the reason why he believes that she's evil is because she's pro-choice uh, and she's for abortions and he is anti-abortion and he is so-called pro-life. And uh, so he was saying that the U.S. Uh, must choose between the lesser of two evils. And that was the headline on the front of CNN. The Pope says that the U.S. must choose between the lesser of two evils. And it got me thinking about a narration uh, from the Ahl Bayt al in which one of the companions to one of the imams asks him about the meaning from the verse of the Holy Quran, where it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and those whom commit evil, those, if they do evil, they say, this is what we found our forefathers doing. And this is what God commanded us to do. Say, verily, Allah does not command evil. Are you saying about God that which you do not know? This is what the verse says. Okay? So, there are these people, and they're committing evil. When they're confronted, and somebody says to them, what you're doing is evil, they say, we found our forefathers doing it. This is our natural way of life. And also, God commanded us to do it. So, actually, the evil that they're doing, they think that it's from God. And then we're commanded to say to them, God doesn't command evil. Are you saying about God that which you do not know? And so the Imam from the Ahl Bayt responded and said, have you ever seen or heard anyone 
in any religion claim that God commands evil? Have you ever heard somebody say that God commands, for example, murder or he commands fornication or adultery? No, but rather the meaning, the true meaning of this verse is the imams of misguidance, the false imams, the false religious leaders who claim to be vicegerents from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And the false leaders who rule over the people, right? The false kings who proclaim authority from God without having been appointed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ones that this verse is pertaining to. So now we see that it has a whole different meaning. That actually what it's talking about, it's talking about followers of Judaism, of Christianity, of Sunni Islam, of Shia Islam, who hold on to an authority figure or hold on to a king, a ruler, who is not somebody who is divinely appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they are confronted and they're told that this is evil, you should not hold on to anybody except to those who are divinely appointed by God. Their response is, well, this is the way of our forefathers. You know, God had commanded us to choose, right? Like when Sistani issues a fatwa and says that everybody should elect or when Khamenei issues a fatwa and says that everybody should vote in the elections for the party that is a Shia party, right? Or when the people look towards the Pope and the Pope is literally commanding them evil. He's saying choose the lesser between the two evils. Well, it should be obvious then that this person who's commanding us to choose evil by his own admission and by his own tongue is not appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah would never command us to do evil, but rather the imams of misguidance, such as Pope Francis, would command us to do evil. Makes perfect sense. It does make perfect sense. And that's why we're commanded um, to hold on to uh, the divinely appointed kings only because all others will command us uh, to do evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never appoint. And that's the, the broader, more important meaning behind this episode and behind that verse from the Quran is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never command a Jewish person to accept somebody who was not appointed from him because somebody who is not infallible, such as a prophet, a messenger, a divinely appointed king, such as David or Solomon, or somebody who is a divinely appointed judge from God could command their people to do evil because he's not enforced with the Holy Spirit. And the same thing with Christianity. God would never command Christians to choose between the lesser of two evils. Jesus, he never made the Christians or commanded them to accept the tyrant or to engage in Roman elections and choose between the lesser of two evils. But rather, Jesus commanded his congregation to follow Simon Peter, who, who was the embodiment of uh, God on earth after him, who carried the keys to the heavens and the earth. And the same thing with Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never command us to follow the likes of Abu Bakr and Omar and Uthman and the Bani Umayyah and the Bani Abbas who uh, led Muslims into uh, great evils, but rather he would only command them to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and the legitimate heirs, the Imams from the Ahl Bayt Salam, whom are infallible and enforced by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Thank you so much for joining me, John. Thank you, Allah Thank you for teaching us always and keeping on the right path. I'm God so happy you. to be your companion. May I die for you, Allah God bless you.
Salam alaikum. Salam.